The Pathfinder consists of both hardware and software components. To take our photo for inventory, we'll first of all have to place the slab onto the frame. If you are using the three-stop method, make sure you align the slab to all three stops. Since this rack only has two stops, we'll set them on the stops with the slab to the right side of the boundary line. And later, we'll mark the locations of the stops. We'll take the picture at the Pathfinder's photo station. Open Slabsmith by double-clicking on the icon. Then open Slab Maker, which is the part that takes the picture. And all the icons that we'll be using are along the left side. The icon that looks like a camera is the one used to take a picture. This one is calibrated for a 3CM material. Click on the icon to take the picture. The picture will go through the process of being calibrated and auto-corrected as it loads. The photo of the slab will also be auto-separated from the Pathfinder's background. This is done with the pink color. As long as there is a solid pink border around the slab, our slab can be traced out correctly. So this left edge has a solid pink border along the slab. We can see there is no border along the slab at the bottom. There are a couple different ways that we can fix this. This right side has a nice solid pink border, so this we would not need to correct either. One of the things you can adjust is the difference threshold. This makes the extraction either more or less sensitive. Adjusting to a higher value will apply more pink fill. So now the right side is completely filled in with a pink border. We will need to fill or correct the border on the bottom edge of the slab, and we don't need to on this left side. We'll find the tools we need under the paintbrush icon. I'm going to start with using the fill area by clicking on it. Then all I have to do is click into an area that I want filled with the pink. The bottom of the slab is really the only area that needs correction. This is also very easy to do with the auto fill. Now even though this slab is properly prepared and ready for the next step, I'm going to demonstrate what some of the other tools could be used for. You could use the paintbrush to fill in any quarried marks on a slab if you needed. And you could use the eraser if any of the auto correction pink flowed into the slab. And again, this slab is ready for the next step, to trace. But before we do, I want to show you another tool. You can easily click and hold down at the little yellow squares in the corners to crop the photo. This works nice for rectangular slabs. And if your slab has straight edges but is not rectangular, you can press and hold down the control key while you're pulling on the corners. I'll bring the corners back out since we don't need to correct this slab anymore. And we'll move on to the next step, which is trace the slab boundary. This is the step that extracts the photo of the slab from the background. The next two icons have to do with taking a markup photo. A markup photo is a second photo used to identify any imperfections in the slab. So we'll physically mark up the slab before we take the photo so we can easily see the areas to avoid. Now we can go back to the Pathfinder station and take a picture of the markups. Do this by clicking on the Take Markup Photo and it will take the photo and then process and calibrate using the exact same boundaries and cropping that we used on the first photo. So now we can clearly see the unusable areas to define. 
which we'll do with a paintbrush by circling our two markups. The last tool I used was to fill, so I'll choose the paintbrush and I can adjust the brush size if needed. And then I'll click and hold down and make a circle around each mark. The circle doesn't have to be perfect. These paint marks will be embedded in this second photo when we choose the next icon, which is Create Unusable Areas. We will be able to see these areas to avoid when we lay our parts out in perfect match. And now we can input information about our slab. The inventory ID can be a number, a word, or a combination of both. I'll just use 4444 4, 4 as my slab ID. When I click OK, that ID will appear in my slab properties panel. I can input as many properties as I'd like, either by selecting them from the drop down menu, or I can add new ones by typing them in the field. I'll set a few of the most common properties. Maybe this material is quartz, and its thickness is 3 centimeters, and its color is gray. Some of these properties, such as the color group, may not be turned on or enabled in your slab maker. These properties can be added or removed from the panel by using the Slabsmith Administrative Database. Also note that the length and width and area are already input from the calibrated photo. The usable area displayed is calculated from the size of the pink shaded area on the slab, which is currently avoiding the areas that we marked up earlier. And since I feel it's possible to place a sink cutout in that area, I'll include it as usable. I can click, hold down, and pull on any one of the drag marks to include what I would like to define as usable area. And you can see the usable area has updated accordingly. You can then save this slab and all of its properties by clicking on the save icon. You can also choose to print a label out by clicking on the label icon. And if you have a label printer attached, the label will be printed out, which you can tear off your printer and then attach it to the slab. Make sure to mark out the locations of the stops along the bottom. Pay the most attention to the left side of the left stop. This will be used as your main reference point. And now you can remove the slab. Here is a list of all the steps we took to take the photo and save all the properties into inventory so we can later use it in perfect match. Thank you for choosing Park Industries. It's